Okay, hello and welcome to chapter 19 of Hidden Figures. Today we are going to read the chapter that's called Model Behavior. And so when you think of that title, always think of why would the author title their chapter Model Behavior? So think about all that you know about what it means to have model behavior and think about all the possibilities, thinking about math and science, what else could model behavior be? And so after you think about that, listen to the story and let's see if your hypothesis is correct. While Katherine Johnson busied herself with the equations that would determine the path that the first Americans would follow into outer space, Mary Jackson focused on making supersonic airplanes even faster and more efficient. Mary loved her job at Langley but she also loved using her technical skills in other ways. One summer, she had a special project in mind. Rather than devote her talents to improving a high-speed aircraft that burned through the skies, Mary decided to lend her trained eye and her understanding of aerodynamics to help her son, Levi, build a car to enter the Virginia Peninsula's 1960 soapbox derby. Mary and Levi had gone to the local Chevrolet dealer to fill out the entry form and pick up a copy of the official rules. The car and driver together must weigh less than 250 pounds. Only rubber wheels allowed. Lens shall not exceed 80 inches. Road clearance must be at least three inches with the driver in the car. The total of the car, the total cost of the car shall not exceed $10 exclusive of wheels and axles. Hmm. Since the beginning of the year, Mary had spent hundreds of hours with her 13 year old son on the motor, the motorless car. They had made sketches and measurements, testing clutter, testing different designs until they settled on one. They searched the clutter in the back of the garage for things that could be useful. Vegetable crates, plywood, wagon wheels, garden tools, old shoes, wire and twine. Almost anything could be put into service. The race held over the 4th of July weekend was fast approaching. On race day, Levi and the other competitors started at the peak of the 25th Street Bridge in Newport News, the only hill in the flat as a pancake coastal area. At the signal to go, the drivers released their brakes and hunched down into the cockpits of their vehicles, waiting for gravity to take them down the 900 feet but race course, the All-American Soapbox Derby mixed American ingenuity with family fun, at least for boys, since girls weren't allowed to compete in the race until the early 1970s. The competition started as a depression era activity, a way to create fun and excitement at a time when they were difficult to come by. By 1960, more than 50,000 boys competed in races across around the country. The competition was popular in the Hampton area. Officially, the Derby was the boys' show. Parents were supposed to sit back and only offer advice, but many parents enjoyed the engineering project at least as much as their children did. Many NASA engineers hoped their children would someday choose to follow in their professional footsteps. They wouldn't get rich, but an engineer's salary was more than enough to enjoy a comfortable, middle-class lifestyle. When it came to the Derby, no NASA fa father had anything on Mary Jackson. She treated the Soapbox Derby car as an apprenticeship in engineering. It didn't stop there. At school, she pushed Levi to take the most challenging math and science classes he could handle, and she coached him on his science projects. Many African-American boys didn't know about the All-American Soapbox Derby, or they didn't think it was for them. Starting early in the year, Chevrolet placed ads in Boys Life magazine, the official publication of the Boy Scouts. 
Life Magazine, the official, said some African American read the ad, some African Americans read the ad, but they frequently disqualified themselves from participating in competitions even without the whites only sign. There was no rule keeping black boys from entering the race, but it took a lot of courage. And a mind that saw the experience as something open to all boys, regardless of their color, for them to give it a try. Now, hi, think about this. There's so many things in so many places that you have not been and that you will go, but it takes courage to get there. No one's telling you that you can't go, but it's like that unknown. Most people will back away or some will take that risk. The race. On Saturday, July 3rd, a crowd of 4,000 people gathered along both sides of the 25th Street Bridge. It was a clear, warm day with just enough breeze to keep the spe spectators from getting hot. Contestants for the first heat wheeled their cars to the starting line and settled in the cockpits. Officials weighed and inspected each car, then held a lottery to determine the position of the first heat. At the crack of the starter's pistol, the pint-sized pilots released their brakes and rolled down the hill. The race was an alley all-day event. Mary Jackson could almost see the air moving around the cars just as clearly as if she were analyzing data from a wind tunnel. Her son's car was well made. The only adjustment it needed was a drop of oil on each wheel bearing. Levi won one heat after another. Then he got into position for the final competition. By the time he reached the finish line, Mary was shouting with delight, Levi won, wearing a black and white crash helmet and the official race t-shirt. Levi has sailed across the finish line at a blazing 17 miles per hour. When interviewed about his victory by the newspapers, Levi explained that the secret to his victory was the slimness of his machine, which helped to lower the wind resistance. Levi won a gold trophy, a new bicycle, and a spot at the National All-American Soapbox Derby in Akron, Ohio. There would be there would face there he would face off, excuse me, against drivers from around the country in front of 75,000 fans on a track where speeds could exceed 30 miles per hour. Levi Jackson was the first colored boy in history to win the Hampton Roads Area Soapbox Derby. From the moment he won, donations started rolling in from black community service organizations and social clubs, black owned businesses, black churches, all eager to support Levi's big trip to Akron. The African American community shared Levi's victory. If a black kid could take home the soapbox derby trophy, what else might be possible? Achievement through hard work, social progress through science, that's what Mary believed in. When Levi took the first place trophy, she was bursting with pride. When a reporter for the Norfolk Journal and Guide asked Levi what he wanted to do when he grew up, he said, I want to be an engineer like my mother. Being a black first, the first black person to have achieved a particular goal was a powerful symbol. Mary Jackson knew just as well as anyone she embraced her son's achievement with delight, but she also knew that the best thing about breaking a barrier was that it would never have to be broken again. Possibilities for women. Mary Jackson believed that achievement worked like a bank account. It was something you drew on when you were in need and paid and made deposits to when you had a surplus. Girls, she believed, needed particular support it wasn't lost on Mary that the Derby, while open to her son, would have rejected her daughter's application. At work, she and the other female mathematicians were no strangers to encountering barriers based on their gender. Despite the relatively large number of women now working at NASA, most female technical professionals, black and white, were classified as mathematicians or computers rather than engineers. 
They were paid less even if they were doing the same work. Mary developed allies among the white women she worked with. She asked one white colleague to participate in a career panel in 1962, organized by the local chapter of the National Council of Negro Women. The woman agreed and they presented a joint lecture, The Aspects of Engineering for Women, at an all-black junior high school. Their appearance on the stage together made a powerful statement about the possibilities of the engineering field for black girls. Mary was black and her colleague Emma Jean was white. Mary was worked, Mary was short and Emma Jean was tall. They looked different but they worked with each other and they also worked with men. Mary had learned her engineering title through hard work, talent and drive, but she knew she owed a debt of gratitude to those women who had led the way. Each woman who had come before had cracked the hole in the wall a little wider, allowing the next talent to come through. Now, Mary wanted to make room for the women coming behind her. <laughs>